Hey there, medical people. Today we're diving into the world of lidocaine, a cool drug that's got your back in cases of cardiac arrest. So how does lidocaine do its magic? Well, it's a class 1B antiarrhythmic. In simpler terms, think of it like a traffic officer at a busy intersection instead of managing cars. It's controlling nerve impulses. It does this by reducing the permeability of the neuronal membrane to sodium ions. Imagine it like closing a floodgate to control the river flow. This results in inhibition of depolarization, or in other words, it keeps the nerve signals from going haywire, effectively putting a stop on conduction. Let's talk dosing. Lidocaine can be administered intravenously or intraosseously. That's fancy talk for into the vein or into the bone. Now, guidelines aren't super clear on when to whip out the lidocaine, but a good rule of thumb is to use it after a second unsuccessful defibrillation attempt, especially in cases where the cardiac arrest was witnessed and you're on a time crunch. For adults, you're going to start with a dose of between 1 to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, then follow up with a second dose of 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per kilogram every 5 to 10 minutes. For kids, it's a bit simpler, with an initial loading dose of 1 milligram per kilogram. This is followed by a continuous infusion of 20 to 50 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Now, what about the onset and duration? When administered as a single intravenous bolus dose, lidocaine kicks into action in about 45 to 90 seconds. That's quicker than making a cup of instant ramen. But it's not a long-lasting fix, with the effects lasting about 10 to 20 minutes, so keep that in mind. Now, no drug is perfect, and lidocaine is no exception. Some of the party pooper effects it can have include bradycardia and cardiac arrhythmias. And, of course, lidocaine isn't for everyone. If someone has a hypersensitivity to lidocaine or any component of its formulation, or another local anesthetic of the amide type, it's a no-go. It's also not suitable for those with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or a high degree of heart block. That's it for today's breakdown, folks. If you found this quick video interesting, you'll definitely want to check out our other videos on cardiac arrest treatments. We've got a whole playlist lined up just for you. So go on, hit that subscribe button and join our medical community. Want more? Head on over to medschool.com for all things medical education.